reached out for my dreams. I reached out for my vision. I reached out for help that I thought I needed. Cause reaching out, reaching out is the proof of passion. Hello again, our most developed student. My name is Confident. Welcome to our lesson today. And in this lesson, we are going to look at the word problems which are found in mathematics in N4. Let us start by looking at the first question given. It says, calculate the biggest possible side length of a square pen which will fit into a hole with a diameter of 20 millimeters. If we can look at the question again, it says, calculate the biggest possible side length of a square so we are looking at the biggest possible side length of a square pen so this pen is in the shape of a square which will fit in a hole with a diameter of 20 millimeters now let us start by coming up with a sketch or kind of a diagram which can represent this scenario So this is our diagram, a sketch of a diagram, in which the blue color represents the, the, the hole, as they are saying, this is a hole uh, with a diameter of 20 millimeter. Now, if you remember the diameter of a circle, it is the line which passes through the center from the uh, circumference to the opposite circumference. So if this is my center, let's say this is the center of uh, this particular circle and in this case i want to have a diameter so i will have my line which is passing from that corner or from the end of the circumference to the other end of the circumference now with that uh, this is what we mean as we say is the diameter of a circle if i can have my line bigger so this is the diameter of a circle as you can see it is from the circumference by looking at the circumference we mean the the, the the one end to the other end of the circumference remember this pen must fit it is in the shape of a square so it must fit in this circle with a diameter and they told us the diameter that this diameter is 20 millimeter so you have a diameter of 20 millimeters and then they are saying calculate the biggest uh, possible side length of a square so in this case if you can look carefully what we're given i can actually take out this side of the square and that side of the square the diagrams are not drawn to size but uh, the aim is to make sure that we have got a right angle triangle in this case this is a right angle triangle so if i can draw that particular right angle triangle it is the one that we're having and one side okay we can say let let one side be equal to our x so in this case we have got the x and then we have got the x as you can see this is a scenario of the pythagoras theorem in which case uh, you are having your right angle triangle and you are supposed to use the Pythagoras theorem to find the solution to that. So in this case, we are having a right angle triangle. This is our side X. That is our side X. And this is our side, which is equal to 20 millimeter. So now if you remember the Pythagoras theorem, it says X squared plus x squared is equal to 20 squared 
Now, if you add that, you are going to have 2x squared is equal to 20 squared. And divide both sides by 2. Now, you have got x squared is equal to 20 over 2, which is squared. So now, for you to find x, you have to square root on both sides. Sometimes you have to say plus or minus, but we don't need the negative one in this case because we are only dealing with length. So the value for x now is equal to, if I can bring my calculator. Now if I'm using my calculator, we are saying is equal to square root of uh, 20 squared divided by 2, which is 10 root 2. Now in SD it is 14.14 to two decimal places. So you've got 14.14 the units were in millimeters. So this is one of the approaches that you're supposed to use uh, to find the answer to this particular problem. Let us move on to look at another problem which involves uh, word problems. It says an aeroplane flying with the wind covers 1,200 kilometers in three hours. That is an important information if I can underline that. An aeroplane flying with the wind. With the wind covers 1,200 kilometers in three hours. And completes the return flight. Now it is returning. It completes the return flight in three hours, 40 minutes. Find the speed of the aeroplane on a quiet day. In other ways, without the uh, having the speed of the wind now. On a quiet day, as well as the wind of the speed under the above mentioned conditions. Which conditions? The conditions in which the wind is present. So now for us to be able to solve this kind of a problem the one of the best approaches is to come up with some sketches so i'm going to start with the first sketch suppose this is our airplane if i can use my my red color suppose this is our airplane and this is the direction of the wind now the direction of the wind we are going to say it is blowing at w for wind kilometers per hour so this is the speed of the wind which is w i'll call it w kilometers an hour and this is the direction remember they say the aeroplane flying with the wind so if it is flying with the wind it means this aeroplane is moving in the direction of the wind so now i can have an arrow pointing in the same direction of the wind so which is the direction of the aeroplane and they told us that it is flying uh, it covers 1200 kilometers in three hours so this particular aeroplane we've got the distance d is 1200 kilometers and then we've got the time which is three hours so this is the first uh, journey that we're given if i can have a line dividing and then we've got the second scenario in the second scenario what we're given or what we're told is that the aeroplane in this time if i can have the aeroplane now the wind is not changing it is still W kilometers an hour. Remember I say W stands for wind. So it's W kilometers an hour. But now what has changed is the aeroplane now is flying against the wind. In other ways, the aeroplane is now opposing the wind. They say the return flight. So if it is returning and the conditions did not change, it means the aeroplane is flying against the wind. And then now it is 
having these conditions the distance does not change because distance going is the same as distance coming back so the distance is still 1200 kilometers but the time did change as you can see the time increased by three hours 40 minutes why because it is now opposing the wind um, that's why the time is even more and then the question now says find the speed we are looking for the speed of the aeroplane on a quiet day by quiet day they are saying when the wind is not present so now here in this case we are going to make our speed in the beginning we call it s1 this is the speed of the aeroplane when it is flying with the wind and s2 will be the speed of the aeroplane when it is flying against the wind now we know the formula for us to be able to calculate speed the formula says speed is equal to distance over time so this is the formula for calculating our speed but now remember there are two speeds that we're having here if I can say kilometers an hour here kilometers an hour so we are measuring the speed in kilometers an hour remember now there is the speed of the aeroplane as well as the speed of the wind which makes the aeroplane to take less time which is that three hours so now if we're going to put that together because those are the two speeds the wind and the aeroplane remember speed is um, it is uh, the speed in this case it is a scalar quantity but the velocity in a way uh, is a vector quantity it can have direction as well as size but now what I want us to focus on is to look at the speed of this particular aeroplane one way to say the speed of the aeroplane which is s1 plus the wind remember speed in this case this is the total speed s is the speed of the aeroplane that plus that of the wind is equal to distance the distance covered was 1200 over and the time taken was three hours in this case if you take a calculator you are going to have 1200 divided by 3 you are having 400 speed is in kilometers per hour so which means s1 plus w remember w is the wind is 400 kilometers an hour which is the first side now in the return journey we, we are also looking at s2 plus the wind of the speed which did not change is equal to the distance also did not change which is 1200 over time which is 3 hours 40 minutes but now we need to convert 40 minutes into hours so you are going to have 40 divided by 60 it is going to give us 3 over 2 which is 0 0.667 and if we add the 3 hours we have got 11 over 3 in this case which is 3.66667 so if we can have that Three point six 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 seven, which was eleven over three, and then again, if we can divide one thousand two hundred divided by, if you remember, it was eleven, so that I don't lose out anything. It was eleven over three. So if I can have my fraction below, it was eleven over three. So with 11 over 3, what I'm getting is 227.27. So it's 327.27 kilometers. So in this case, we are having two speeds. The speed when it was going with the wind which is 400 kilometers an hour it is higher because it is the wind is involved but in the second one it is opposing the wind 
which is in this case actually i was not supposed to use a plus i need to correct that it is supposed to say sw minus as you can see the errors are, are, are opposing each other the, sp the speed of the aeroplane is facing the left and the speed of the wind is uh, facing the right so in this case what we are having is s2 minus w so now if you have all this we can now find our average speed now remember the formula for average speed we have got two speeds so going to use a different plane average speed is equal to s1 plus w plus s2 minus w divided by 2 so in other ways you're finding the speed of s1 plus w plus s2 plus uh, plus w which in this case you can see the wind is coming out or is being subtracted because when it was going it had high speed when it was coming it had low speed because of opposing the wind so in actual fact you've got s1 plus s2 over 2 which is equal to 400 plus 327.27 over 2 now if you use your calculator you are going to get if you say 400 plus 327.27 is equal to and then you divide that by 2 you are going to get 363.64 so we have 363.64 363.64 kilometers per hour so in this case this is the speed the question uh, was asking for us to say um, find the speed of the aeroplane on a quiet day so the speed of the aeroplane on a quiet day you can see now that it is 363.64 why because on the quiet day we did remove the wind in this case the wind was separated and taken out so hence this is the speed on a quiet day and then the second part of the question says find the speed of the aeroplane on a quiet day as well as the wind speed so now we want to find the speed of this wind for you to find the speed of this wind is not difficult also you can uh, consider taking one of the equations you can take the first one in this uh, this case it is saying s1 plus w is equal to 400 so if you can take that one which is s1 plus the speed of the wind is equal to 400 now we know the speed on a quiet day it is 363.64 plus w is equal to 400 and then we've got the wind speed is 400 minus 363.64 and then if you use your calculator there you are going to get 400 minus 363.64 you are going to get 36.36 which is 36 point three six kilometers per hour so this is the speed of the wind and then this is the speed of the aeroplane so these are the two speeds as the question said calculate the speed of the aeroplane as well as that of the wind let us move on to the next question that involves a word problem it says an aeroplane takes 30 minutes if i can underline again an aeroplane takes 30 minutes longer okay an aeroplane takes 30 minutes longer to fly to fly 300 kilometer against a headwind 
blowing at a constant speed when flying with the wind. Let me read again. An aeroplane takes 30 minutes longer to fly against a headwind blowing at a con constant speed than when flying with the wind. So there are two directions already involved here. It is flying, it is flying against the wind and if it is flying against the wind which means it is opposing the wind. It is taking 30 minutes longer. And then if it is flying with the wind, that's why it says here it is flying with the wind which means it will take 30 minutes less compared to when it's flying against the wind. The speed of the aeroplane is 250 kilometers an hour when no wind is blowing. Now the question is what is the speed of the wind? If you can take a, a careful look, this question is exactly similar to the one that we're looking at previously, just that the information that they've given is, uh, in this case, they have now given us the average speed in, uh, of the aeroplane. Now we have to work our way backwards. So now, if we can also come up with some sketches, here we've got uh, two scenarios, an aeroplane which is flying against the wind. So if I can draw one of the diagrams here, suppose this is our aeroplane and suppose this is the direction of the wind. So this is the direction of the wind and what is the direction of the wind? We are saying the speed of that wind is W kilometers per hour, like previously. And then suppose this is our airplane moving opposite to the wind. Remember, it's against the wind. So this is our airplane. It is opposing the wind. So the airplane is opposing the wind in this case. And they told us that it is flying it will take 30 minutes longer so now we can also say let the speed of this aeroplane be s1 kilometers per hour as we're having and we are also given some information that distance is equal to 300 kilometers and then now the time they did not give us the time let us call that time our t1 and then coming to the other side we have got again our aeroplane. In this case, we still have we still have the, the 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 speed of the wind will not change. It will always remain as W kilometers an hour. And then, as we said, this is our wind. Now, what we are given, which is a change in this case, is that the aeroplane now is flying with the wind. It means it is going in the direction of the wind. So now this is our aeroplane. And in this case, let's call the speed S2 kilometers per hour. And we are also given some information. Remember, the distance does not change. It is 300 kilometers. And then the time taken in this case we also are told that okay let's call it time t2 but there is something that is interesting with the time they say it an airplane takes 30 minutes longer to fly against so in this case remember this side is against the wind let me use a different pen this is against And this is with the wind so it's in the same direction so now it's if it's if it is taking 30 minutes long against the wind we can establish that our t the time taken here it is the time which is t1 which is t2 plus 30 minutes but remember we have to convert 30 minutes into hours to convert 30 minutes into hours we are saying 30 divided by 60 which is same as 0 
so what we are having we, have, we are having t2 plus 0 0.5 hours so which means this aeroplane flying against the wind will take the time of t2 plus 30 minutes later that's why we are having 0 0.5 added to it so now with this information what we need now to establish as we said similar is to find the formulas for speed so in this first one if we can calculate the speed in the first one we are going to say uh, speed which is s1 is equal to distance if i can write the formula for speed again here remember speed is d over t distance over time so now in this scenario i can use a different marker in this scenario if we were to find our s1 is equal to our distance we are told is 300 over time now our time is t2 plus 0 0.5 and then with the wind again we can find our s2 is equal to distance now our distance is 300 over our time in this case is our t2 so now we have got the speed of s1 and we have got the speed also of s2 so now remember if we were to find here if we were to also look at the speed we mentioned that there is also the speed of the wind if you remember the speed of the wind was cancelling each other so we can actually ignore the speed of the wind because against and with the wind you saw that the wind will cancel out each other now we can find the average speed so if we look at the formula for the average speed we can say average speed is equal to s1 plus s2 divided by 2 so in this case there is also some information that were given they told us information here that the speed of the aeroplane is 250 when no wind is blowing so which means that is the average speed that were given because there is no wind blowing so now you can say what we also know is that the average speed is 250 kilometers an hour so now we have got two uh, equations one with the average speed in terms of s1 and s plus s2 over 2 as well as the average speed that is given from the question so now we have to solve that so if i can continue here to say the average speed is s1 which is 300 over t2 plus 0 0.5 plus 300 over t2 i divide this by 2 remember it is average so now if i can solve this particular question it will need a bit of algebra there I can come up with my equation to say here what I'm having is T2 plus 0 0.5 I mean it's 300 you know T2 is 300 over T2 plus 0 0.5 plus 300 over T2 everything divided by 2 is equal to 250 remember the average is the one that makes us to divide by 2 so i can literally multiply this top by 2 in this case i must put it in brackets here and i also multiply the right hand side by 2 why am i doing that i'm doing that so that i can cancel out the, the denominator there which is 2 and this will become uh, 250 times 2 which is a 500 so now I will ha then have 300 over t2 plus 0 0.5 plus 300 over t2 is equal to 500 so now we have got an equation there that we are dealing with 
if we are to continue to solve this particular equation. Now we can actually find the common denominator on our left hand side which is my t2 and t2 plus 0 0.5 and then start to solve that and what I will have in here I will have 300 I'm just solving my fractions multiplying t2 plus 300 multiplying t2 plus 0 0.5 you can solve uh, in different ways this is simple algebra now is equal to 500 and I can now expand that if I expand that I will have 300 t2 plus 300 t2 plus 300 times 0 0.5 I think it's half of that which is 150 all over I can expand that which is t2 squared plus 0 0.5 t2 is equal to 500 I can continue with my problem in this case now I can actually to simplify what is below I can uh, cross multiply where I can multiply that by 1 and that by 500 or multiply by t2 t2 squared plus 0 0.5 whatever way but you can cross multiply and if I'm cross multiplying I have got 500 into t2 squared plus 0 0.5 t2 is equal to 300 plus 300 is 600 t2 plus 150 you can see now this is a quadratic equation now I can simplify it further to have 500 t2 squared plus 500 times 0 0.5 this is a half of 500 which is 250 t2 I can now transpose 600 it will become minus 600 t2 also transpose the 150 it becomes a negative 150 this will give me a zero so now if I continue to solve it I will have now 500 t2 squared plus 250 t2 now actually I mustn't have plus 250 I can use my calculator there I've got 250 minus 600 which is 250 minus 600 it's giving me 350 so it's a negative actually negative 350 so I will have minus 350 t2 minus 150 is equal to a zero now it's simpler I can use my quadratic equation here if I'm using my quadratic equation to solve this I will have t2 is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a which is equal to minus minus 350 plus or minus square root of b squared which is minus 350 squared minus 4 my a is 500 and my c is negative 150 all over my 2 into a so if I can solve that my t2 is equal to now I'm going to use my calculator I'm, I choose the quadratic equation because sometimes it simplifies a lot of things so I've got 
negative bracket negative 350 I'll start with the positive square root of negative 350 squared minus 4 into 500 and into negative 150 and then I can play down there 2 into 500 now if I simplify that I'm getting a 1 so t2 is equal to 1 or t2 is equal to if I can uh, play back and get the negative which is minus 0 0.3 so now we have got two values of t2 it's 1 and negative 0 0.3 so this won't be a solution because we don't have negative time so now in other ways our time which is t2 is equal to one hour so t time is equal to one hour so the time taken for this is equal to one hour now let us come back to the question the question is saying if i can bring back the question and the equation the question is saying an airplane takes 30 minutes longer to fly to fly 300 kilometers against the headwind blowing on a constant speed than when flying with the wind so when it was flying with the wind it took here it took one hour so now if here it took 30 minutes longer it took one hour 30 minutes that's what we are, we are now deducing from what we just calculated and then it says the speed of the aeroplane is 250 kilometers longer when no wind is blowing what is the speed of the wind now if you can remember the equation that we had we said the speed of the wind this was the speed of the wind speed of the wind was s1 is 300 over t2 uh, plus 0.5 now you know your t2 is 1 which is same as 300 over in this case uh, that is the speed in this case let me come back again to this question it says what is the speed of the wind or oh, we are looking at the speed of the wind so now the first part is let's, let us look at s1 and look at s2 and remember the speed of s1 and s2 if we separate it we're going to find the speed of the wind so now s1 will be called to 300 over 1 plus 0 0.5 which is equal to, if I can bring a calculator, we are going to have 300 over 1 plus 0 0.5. We are getting a 200. So here the speed is 200 kilometers per hour. Again, we are having the speed for S2 here. If we can solve it, remember S2. Uh, we discovered that S2 is what? I mean T2 is 1 hour so this is same as 300 over 1 which is 300 kilometers per hour so you can see that when it was flying with the wind it was flying faster it was 300 kilometers an hour when it was opposing the wind it became slower it was 200 kilometers an hour now what we also have remember we need to find the average speed. Now the average speed again is this formula that we're given. We said average speed was S1 plus S2 over 2. This was the average speed, which was 250. So now if you take a look at this carefully, if we separate the higher speed minus uh, the lower speed and we divide by 2 we'll find the average speed of the wind so average speed of the wind in this case will be equal to 300 minus 
200 and just like we're dividing by 2 we also divide by 2 here which is equal to 300 minus 200 is 100 over 2 which is in this case equal to 50 kilometers per hour so this is the average speed of the wind or the speed of the wind as the question is saying what is the speed of the wind also one of the ways also of uh, approaching uh, the same question if i can uh, create my box here is if you look at it at, at, at what we had uh, if i can create a box here to get the same answer remember we said the wind like in this scenario we say the speed s1 and the wind they are facing opposite direction so if i can say s1 minus that of the wind i get 250 which was the constant speed but now i know what is my s1 remember what was my s1 my s1 was 200 so if i can say 200 minus the wind of the speed is equal to 250 so now if i can take that on the other side i will have um 200 minus 250 is equal to w in this case now i'm getting the speed of the wind as negative 50 so negative 50 is equal to the wind of the speed in this case i will say the negative sign can be ignored because it shows that it is opposing uh, the aeroplane because it is against so that particular uh, wind uh, that particular sign can also be ignored so as I said this is how you can use uh, the two scenarios to find that the average speed of the air wind was 50 kilometers per hour now these are some of the uh, problems that you can find uh, in mathematics in N4 which can actually need you to come up with some sketches before you can solve them. Thank you. I reach out for my dreams I reach out for my vision I reach out for help that I thought I needed Cause reaching out, reaching out is the proof of it.